हेलो सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग शिवेंदु राइट यस सर ओके सो यू हैव अप्लाइड फॉर द डेटा साइंटिस्ट रोल इन आर कंपनी एग्जैक्टली सर यस सर ओके तो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल टेल मी अबाउट योर सेल्फ सर हाय गुड मॉर्निंग माय नेम इज शिवेंदु त्यागी आई एम अ स्टूडेंट करेंटली परसुइंग माय ग्रेजुएट फ्रॉम गुरु गोविंद सिंह इंटरप्राइज यूनिवर्सिटी स्पेशलाइज इन इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स इंजीनियरिंग I have scored okay. an overall CGPA of 8.3, and I have a good knowledge of uh, Python, machine learning, deep learning, and along with it, I also love to uh, going for the bike rides, listening to some music, and uh, playing cricket. And okay. yeah, that's all about me. Okay, done. So you have applied for data scientist role. Yes. So I think you must be aware of machine learning algorithms, deep learning algorithms. Exactly, sir. okay so first of all i just want to have one thing uh, tell me one algorithm you have mastered upon tell uh, me one algorithm okay um, sir according to me i have mastered in uh, the naive bayes algorithm naive bayes algorithm yes sir okay so what is a naive bayes classifier so basically uh, naive bayes classifier classifiers are a family of simple probabilistic classifiers and they are based on applying bayes bayes theorem right so uh, okay. if i would explain you in a simple meaning right uh, through bayes bayes theorem we we find the probability of an event right we find the probability of event given that this particular event the event b has already occurred right so i am okay. saying i am saying that uh, i am finding the probability of a given that uh, the event b has already occurred right so that's what we find through our naive bayes uh, classifier right naive bayes algorithm and uh, we have also fixed formula for this particular thing that is uh, it, it equals to uh, the event b it equals to the probability of finding the event b given that the event a has already occurred and uh, we multiply it with the probability of uh, event a and we divide it with the probability of event b right so these are basically the historical events which have occurred and uh, of event a and uh, similarly we have here uh, the probabilities of uh, event b which have occurred and through this particular formula uh, we do all the classifications in our naive bayes algorithm right so that's it about our naive bayes algorithm okay so this is i guess this is the theorem this is something a theorem yes sir i just want to know the name of the theorem sir it is basically uh, by bayes theorem uh, we use it is bayes theorem yes sir we okay. use bayes theorem so it is uh, i can say it is in the parts of stats right yes sir okay so i just want to have that what is the difference between a descriptive descriptive statistic okay descriptive and inferential okay inferential okay okay, okay. So, i just want to know the difference between them okay sir uh, can i erase all these things yeah yeah sure 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 okay but fine no problem thank you so uh, see basically i would explain you in a second see uh, first uh, we have our descriptive statistics right okay and uh, then we have our similarly inferential statistics right so uh, these are two different different statistics we use and uh, yeah okay so i would uh, firstly go with the descriptive statistics basically as its name suggests we focus on describing the characteristics or the features of data set right so it all uh, does is gives the description and it focuses on the description and uh, it uh, through this description we get all the characteristics we get all the features of our data set and uh, uh, we also look for measures of distribution right uh, like central tendency uh, variability and we do this in order to you know the to draw the conclusion based on the known data right so that's it about the this particular descriptive statistics and uh, okay okay just wait a second wait a second shivan you are saying that uh, descriptive just focus on description okay yes sir description of uh, what on our of our uh, the features which our data set holds okay okay fine fine continue continue 
ओके ओके एंड नेक्स्ट वी हैव दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग दैट इज इन्फेरेंशियल स्टैटिस्टिक्स राइट सो इट फोकस इज ऑन मेकिंग द जनरलाइजेशन राइट जनरलाइजेशन यस इट फोकस इज ऑन मेकिंग द जनरलाइजेशन जनरलाइजेशन अबाउट अ लार्जर पॉपुलेशन based on the uh, some particular sample of that population right so we are making generalization uh, by looking at some particular uh, fix uh, yeah we can say some small data set and we are making it generalized for the bigger data set right so it also allows to ma- make pred- production predictions so uh, its results are usually in the form of uh, probability like i told you in the uh, very starting that uh, yes, yes. Do- you are saying that name by is a probabilistic model yes sir, exactly 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 okay okay fine uh yeah. okay so i just want to know one thing more that is yes. you are saying just uh, can you raise that oh okay sir i will do it yeah okay fine so basically you are saying naive bias okay yes, so why this name by algorithm called as naive Okay. I just want to know. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh. See, we call it naive because its assumptions, right? Uh, is uh, its assumptions that it assumes that all the features in the data set are equally important and they are independent too, right? They are independent. All the features are independent and they are important too. So, uh, we call it naive because its assumptions. These assumptions are really optimistic and it is uh. rarely true it is rarely true in uh, most real world applications right so we call it a uh, naive because it is like uh, uh, in lame words if i would explain you uh, it is innocent that is the okay. perf- perfect word i uh, use it when i say naive that is it is innocent right so it consider all the features as as equally important and independent too so yeah that's why i guess we call it naive Okay, so can you choose a classifier based on the size of the training set? Mm, yeah, we can do it, sir. We can do it. How you can define that, sir? Uh, I would say like uh, if the available availability of the data is a constraint, right? If it is, it has some constraint that is the training data is smaller, or if the data set has fewer number of observations. and uh, high number of features right basically uh, if we have few number of rows and high number of columns uh, we can choose algorithm with a uh, high bias uh, we can choose algorithm with high bias or or low variance like uh, we have here with our name bias right in those particular cases we can go for a uh, name bias and uh, in fact i guess uh, we can go with svm2 okay so i just want to know that how this classifier yes sir works <coughs> okay I, i just want to know in simpler terms how does this naive bias classifier works okay so, working of naive bias classifier so basically i would say uh, see naive bias uh, okay let me write it over here Naive bias classifier, right? So basically, what we do is we apply Bayes theorem, right? Uh, here, mm-hmm. this particular Bayes, it is a theorem, right? We apply Bayes theorem uh, with the naive assumptions, right? I have told you the naive assumptions, right? We are, uh, I hope you are particular with the naive assumptions, and we apply these yeah. assumptions to our Bayes theorem, right? And uh, okay. basically, what happens in Bayes theorem is it states that uh, uh, for a given class variable, suppose we have a class variable y. right we have a class variable y and uh, we have some dependent we have some dependent feature vectors that is uh, suppose we have some uh, features here that is uh, x equals to suppose x1 plus x2 plus x3 these are all the um, dependent features uh, we have and here comes the main role of uh, bayes theorem that uh, tells the conditional probability of the class label y right here we have this particular label i have told you that we have a label y and it will tell uh, this particular probability of this particular label and we have for this particular label we have these observations right i have told you we have these dependent features so uh, it will tell us that probability of y and given that these observations we have till xn right 
and it equals to probability of y into probability of x1 till xn and uh, given that y has already occurred right uh, here the most important thing is given that we have already uh, discovered the probability of y right and we divide it uh, again with the probability of x1 till xn right uh, this so yeah this resembles to the formula which i have told you in the very starting so yeah this this resembles to the base theorem yeah exactly exactly so that's it okay. that's it okay so uh, you are saying that the nearby classifier works upon uh, these kinds of uh, i can say this formula based right exactly sir okay fine so based on this base theorem okay i just want to give you one numerical it is basically a mathematics one okay okay uh, it's basically a stats one i can say so you have to find a probability okay of dangerous fire okay when there is smoke okay and i'm giving you some conditions okay i'm giving you some conditions and i'm just writing that first one the i can say a uh, probability of dangerous fire dangerous fire are rare okay that is 1% okay i'm giving you this second condition is this that smokes x common smoke is common okay and it is 10% okay smoke is common third condition is that 90% of dangerous fire make smoke okay okay sir okay sir this these are the three conditions and you have to find me the probability of dangerous fire when there is smoke okay 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 fine yeah uh, okay can you do that uh so yes sir. i'm uh, clear with that can i uh, jump to the solution yeah yeah sure uh, just wait wait for a second wait for a second okay um okay 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 conditions are good conditions are good okay sir see basically uh, what i uh, got to know when you were writing these things right uh, here i got to know that uh, we have given the we have been given the probability of fire right so if i would say probability of fire here simply uh, i would get that uh, it is 1% that means uh, it is 1 by 100 so simply i would write 0.01 right from here i have drawn this particular conclusion right and okay. uh, when i come to this uh, particular statement uh, uh, here it is written smoke is common that is 10% right so uh, i can say that uh, again here i have been given the probability of smoke right that is 10% okay. and uh, it is pretty clear that it is 0.1 right so i have uh, drawn the probability of fire and i have drawn the probability mm -hmm. of smoke. now comes the main thing that is we have to find the probability of uh, fire when there is when there is smoke right uh, when there is smoke so uh, we yes. should know we should know the probability of smoke when there is fire right when there is fire exactly Okay. so uh, here i have uh, been given that 90% of dangerous fire makes smoke 90% of dangerous fire makes smoke so i would say that uh, here i have been given the uh, i have been given that uh, smoke uh, fire has occurred yes fire has occurred and uh, here okay. i have been given the probability of smoke yes mm -hmm. uh, if i would explain you this again that means that uh, i have been given the probability of smoke and the fire the event fire has already occurred right so right right that is 90% that means it is 0.9 here right so uh, these three statements uh, uh, just simply point to these three probabilities which i have uh, written over here so i would erase it uh, and i would just simply write the solution here and uh, please give me a second sir just wait a second i'm clearing all drawing yes sir okay thank you so much so uh, now let's come to the main uh, main solution that is we have to find the probability of 
fire right uh, probability of dangerous fire when, when there is smoke right okay so uh, it will simply according to bayes theorem i would apply bayes theorem over here and i would say that it is equals to probability of fire into my probability of smoke uh, where we have already uh, discovered the event fire right and we will simply divide it with the probability of smoke and now it is easy because i have told you that uh, i have uh, discovered all the values over here so i would simply apply 0.01 into uh, 0.9 and i would divide it with 0.1 so uh, through this we will get our solution over here okay what will be the equal solution uh, i guess it would be 0.09 Zero point okay one one point one okay done yeah correct okay nine, fine nine zero point zero okay ah uh, that is good I just want to know okay I just want to know about what are the disadvantages of ah uh, using naive Bayes algorithm sir ah uh, disadvantages about ah uh, naive Bayes algorithm okay. 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 Yes. So basically, what happens with the nearby theorem is it relies on very big assumption, right? I've told you the assumption, and it is a very big assumption that all the uh, variables, all the features are independent and are not related to each other, right? So that uh, assumption sometimes, uh, sometimes it creates problem for our nearby theorem, right? And uh, again, I would, if I would talk about a uh, second disadvantage, it is generally not suitable for data sets with large number of numerical attributes. Here comes a very big uh, disadvantage of nearby that it doesn't uh, deal with the uh, numerical attributes, right? So that is, according to me, a second disadvantage. And uh, uh, the third disadvantage would be uh, if uh, it if there is a rare case, uh, it is that um, I would say that the training data set is there, but it is in the testing data set, then it will. Uh, um, but I would I want to say that. Uh, rare case is not in the training data set but in the testing data set uh, then it will most definitely be wrong well that is it will i, I didn't understand what you have uh, taught the last point i didn't get that can you please repeat uh, that uh, okay i would say that it has been observed that if a rare case that if i would talk about a rare case well, what is rare case what is rare case uh, uh, a rare what... case by rare case i mean uh, about uh, the numerical attributes right i would uh, mean here over here I want to say that uh, if we have some rare case there, where there are. Uh, can I say? Can I say that you are saying you are saying that it is outlier? Uh, yeah, I'm just focusing on outlier over here. Okay, so uh, you are saying that rare case means outliers. Okay. Yes, sir. But uh, the word that uh, in the rare cases or in the outliers, we do not have a uh, much problem in the training. right uh, we do not have much problem in the training but when come when it comes to testing we definitely uh, face a lot of problem and it will definitely be wrong so that is the thing that uh, we need to focus that uh, we need to take care of these outliers otherwise we will uh, simply observe that yeah it is performing good in training but uh, in the testing it will be definitely wrong and you know it will uh, create a chaos in that particular situation right that is i want to okay i just want to say that How would you use a naive Bayes classifier for categorical features? And suppose if it has some features which are numerical. Yes, sir. How would you use that, sir? Ah, uh, in the case of uh, numerical features, I would uh, say that uh, we we can use uh, like any kind of ah uh, uh, we can use any kind of predictor in a naive Bayes classifier, right? In the naive Bayes classifier. in the naive bayes classifier we can use any kind of predictor over here right so let's come to the thing which you were asking that uh, we need to know the conditional probability of a feature right when the when a particular event is given we need to know the conditional probability when a particular event uh, is given that is the class uh, suppose we have been given this particular event then we need to know this right and this is what we do in our planning about that i knew about that okay right so uh, for the categorical features features we can estimate this particular uh, this particular term uh, very easily using a distribution right uh, such okay, as uh, type of distribution uh, sorry which type of distribution so we can go for a uh, i guess bernoulli distribution would be uh, simply just very uh, would work uh, good here okay bernoulli distribution 
yes sir okay okay and what about the numerical features and sir for numerical features we can estimate uh, this we can estimate this uh, p of f over class and uh, we can estimate over here using distribution such as we have a normal distribution or we have gaussian distribution so that is the difference it comes when we have to deal with the categorical features and we have to deal with the numerical features okay fine fine uh, do you know about bernoulli distribution uh, yes sir i know about bernoulli distribution okay fine explain it See, explain it briefly okay in a short manner okay 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 so uh, basically it is the i would say bernoulli distribution it is okay thank you so much a bernoulli distribution it is basically a probability distribution of a random variable right it is a probability distribution of random variable which takes the value 1 uh, with the probability p and suppose we have a probability p and it it will take value 1 over here and it will take the value 0 with the uh, probability suppose uh, we have when we have probability q equals to 1 minus p then it will take a value 0 otherwise it will take a value p in case of probability p that is what i understand with the bernoulli distribution which uh, it tells about our a uh, random variable bernoulli distribution means that p will take one yes sir. and the event which is not happening in the p will take as zero exactly sir okay this is bernoulli distribution yes sir okay fine i think that would be more than enough for a particular algorithm okay and you have answered it well so thank you for joining shivendu and we'll contact you soon thank if you are so getting thank you so much okay okay, okay. okay. goodbye